Breakthroughs in science and technology, innovations in business and beyond. Join us as we educate, enlighten, and entertain. Coming up on Advancements. Developments in management software are simplifying care for both patients and professionals. Innovative ideas are helping to create premier museum quality exhibitions. Breakthroughs in operational performance are helping organizations achieve and sustain higher levels of improvement. And learn how technology is changing the way the world thinks about battery safety. This and more, all ahead in the next half hour. Healthcare has improved rapidly in recent years, exponentially raising quality of life on a global level. However, as care demands increase, healthcare systems are struggling to evolve to meet patient needs. Technology is significantly influencing the healthcare sector more today than it has ever in so many ways. If you start with the fundamental role of what technology is there to provide, in healthcare specifically, it's a mechanism that aims to create better outcomes for those receiving care and a more effective and enjoyable work experience for those that are providing it. Healthcare systems are struggling to evolve with ever-changing needs of its patients because fundamentally the systems are driven from software vendors. But there's too many in the healthcare space that are focused on the creation of their own intellectual property. And it's this mindset that's really driving the wrong behavior where they're trying to own all of their technology instead of leveraging with all the technology that exists out in market today. But if you aggregate the data correctly and the systems together correctly, the outcomes for healthcare providers is significant. From population aging to changing patient expectations and the never-ending cycle of innovation, the healthcare industry is feeling the pressure to improve business sustainability, profitability, and scalability. One major factor is the influence that regulators and insurers have over the service and remuneration model that healthcare providers have to adhere to. And in addition to this is rising healthcare costs and needs to be better and more information provided to the regulators and the insurers so that they can truly understand the money and the value that is being received for those receiving the care. If you couple that with the growing demand for healthcare across the board, what it really does is exposes the, you know, the workforce capacity shortfall that exists globally. The behavioral health community is feeling the same pressures as the broader healthcare community. Look, we have this perfect storm of profitability challenges with rising wage rates. And when you combine that with insurance companies and Medicaid who pay for services, they're not increasing reimbursement rates anytime soon. So that gross margin pressure strains cash flow and makes it hard to, to run the, the organization that we need to run. On top of all that, the, with unemployment rates being where they are, it's extremely difficult to find values aligned, high quality staff. So everything we can do to find those team members is critical because our families deserve the best. Now, developments in technology are being integrated into workforce management to create a seamless healthcare ecosystem that delivers better care to patients and communities. There are many stakeholders involved in the interactions between clients and healthcare providers. Some of those stakeholders include perhaps the parents of the client or even the insurers that represent the client. Conversely, on the other side, for the provider, there might be stakeholders such as the administration staff um, or even schedulers. What needs to happen for optimized care outcomes is that all of these stakeholder groups need to be working in concert together. Orienting our focus on the various operational processes used by these various healthcare niches while seeking guidance from industry experts allows us to capture these requirements and adapt them for frequent enhancement and releases to our product. Our entire focus is supporting organizational sustainability and scalable solutions for healthcare providers. The purpose-built software aggregates with specialist applications to create a single solution enabling providers to manage their entire organization and workforce in one place. Before we had Lumery, we had 30 different tech software that made up our tech stack. Having a single cloud-based solution is the only way to manage a multi-state organization. It also gave us one dashboard across all our billing and revenue cycle functions to improve cash collection, which is critical for sustainability. Next generation software helps to optimize businesses. It makes them be able to work more efficiently. It allows them to differentiate themselves from other um, practices. 
And it really helps to make sure that we're streamlining those processes, we're bringing it together. There's such a demand for providers right now. So by ensuring that they're able to work that much faster, be able to focus on their clients and do what they love to do, it's going to be able to differentiate. People are gonna to wanna to be there because they can actually do what they came there to do, which is provide care. The healthcare ecosystem helps disability, autism therapy, allied health, and aged care providers to transform and optimize operational effectiveness within a connected workforce that delivers a truly customer-centric experience. Children with autism require multidisciplinary care teams, psychologists, social workers, board-certified behavior analysts, behavior technicians. It's critical that those care teams can communicate efficiently and effectively through instant messaging and other secure and confidential apps. The knowledge of one on the care team has to be the knowledge of all. In addition, parents are critical members of the care team. They have to be in the loop. They have to be taught so skills can generalize across all the times that clinicians are not with the child. And parents expect in this day and age that a technology solution will be as intuitive as an app that they might download. From complete employee and client management to scheduling and billing, automating mundane admin tasks can take the stress out of compliance processes enabling providers to focus on what matters most, the care of their patients. By allowing more people to have access to care, we're going to be helping the entire community. It helps to streamline businesses and allows everybody in an organization to make their job that much easier. So ensuring that everybody in an organization has access to be able to make their job just a little bit easier, it allows them to then help more children, which ultimately is what we're hoping for. The incorporation of more intelligence in both improved reporting ability and the future inclusion of artificial intelligence overall will further optimise and change the way in which software systems and healthcare providers are practising. But the reality is this can only be really realised when a healthcare provider has established a sustainable and operating model, which can only be done with really the right technology for continued support and care in the future. The edutainment industry is expected to see increased adoption with statistics suggesting the market will reach $10 billion by 2026. The concept combines education with entertainment and offers people an interactive environment that presents a great advantage to the learning process. Edutainment is the combination of education and entertainment or entertainment that's educational. And it's not that it's a new concept, it's just that it's growing so rapidly because it's being more widely applied. I think people find education more palatable if it's combined with entertainment. Edutainment provides an advantage to the learning process by combining the education and entertainment and with powerful showcases, illustrations, and detailed video presentations. The edutainment industry works hard to create compelling content that can meet individual learning styles while remaining age appropriate. Well, there are challenges with creating compelling educational content because the very definition of compelling changes. We bring our past experiences to this content and everybody learns a little bit differently. Now, frankly, some of the subjects are a little bit difficult to deal with, so it's our challenge to find ways that make it easy to receive. It's important to find the right balance and focus on the different learning levels so that the guests can educate and master difficult concepts. So. Even technology is empowering for children. It can enhance the experience for all ages. Today, exhibitions and out-of-home edutainment continues to adapt and evolve beyond static displays and objects and cases. As such, content producers and collection owners are constantly looking for innovative ways to incorporate technology into these experiences. Some of the methods that we use um, to provide relevant content and really try to open people's minds are, obviously we present information through the written word and through video, but then also through experiences. Um, our goal is if you can read it, if you can see it, if you can touch it, if it causes self-reflection, then you can apply it. In a world where diseases, mental health, and external stressors plague us, new developments and technologies are providing a window into our unique attributes so society can help those in need. You know, in the days past, it used to be one method, one directional information. But if we don't take into account how different learning styles apply to different students, how effective can we be in communicating the content? And that really is the goal. Bodies exhibition is essentially a way to dive deeper into understanding our bodies. It takes you on a journey through all the different structures and functions within the body, 
as well as the roles and functions that they play to regeneration of our bones, how they provide a structural framework, as well as the organs and each function and how they all work together and how they occur simultaneously without us really having to focus on that throughout the day. Located in Las Vegas, Nevada, the exhibition utilizes an innovative polymer preservation process that showcases real, full bodies and organs, providing a detailed, three-dimensional vision of the human form that is rarely seen outside of an anatomy lab. It's a special silicone polymer that's used, so it allows the organs in the body to, in a sense, transform with a plastic texture. We don't have to worry about them deteriorating as easily versus if they were with a formaldehyde. So therefore, this allows for medical professionals and students to be able to study them for a longer period of time. With improved scanning capabilities and 3D printing, interchangeable parts for modular systems, and the ability for wearers to change parts themselves. Technology is paving the way for prosthetics to become affordable, accessible, and empowering to the wearer. The Alternative Limb Project serves as inspiration for amputees and also the general public to think about the body in a different way, claiming control, self-expression and identity. And it serves as an inspiration to makers and artists, engineers and the industry at a whole to kind of look at prosthetics from a kind of holistic arts perspective as well as a self-expression psychologically as well as just kind of fit and function. The application of technology to explore the human body is helping viewers leave with a sense of hope on how they too can make educated choices for their health and well-being, while empowering them with understanding and empathy to help others. The exhibition provides a sense of hope for those that come through and influences their lifestyle choices through a better understanding of what they can do to take care of their bodies. Unfortunately, things like wars um, do actually get technology moving quite fast and um, you also have amazing cultural shifts like uh, the Paralympics and awareness of amputees paves the way for a lot of young people getting into the industry and wanting to kind of push from an engineering perspective but now also um, the arts as well. So it's all about celebration of difference and taking control over one's body, thinking beyond the realms of the human body such as themes of transhumanism. It's about um, creating a shift in attitudes as well, so breaking down boundaries socially so people notice what's there as opposed to what's missing. And ultimately you're kind of wearing your soul on your sleeve, so it's, um, it's an empowering um, choice. The edutainment industry is growing and I think that future trends and impacts will include more immersive environments. I think people like to feel the um, impact of education as they're going through it. And I also think that our guests want to better customize the content. Instead of us telling you what's relevant, they want to be able to dig deeper into subjects that they're more interested in and pass over things that are less interesting to them. So I think they want to have a little bit more control of their individual experiences. Forcing the world to change seemingly overnight, the global pandemic brought several issues to light. In the healthcare industry, it helped people see the vital and often overlooked role that nurses play. When the pandemic hit, it caused us to innovate or start to innovate in healthcare, right? So we had a pretty quick pivot, and I'm talking both financially um, from a stability perspective as well as clinical delivery of care, right? So it really turned that upside down. So what used to take us weeks and months to make decisions on, we were making hundreds of those decisions daily. Nurses has always been very important to the healthcare system. They're, they're really the center of the universe for patients, especially in an acute care hospital environment. So they're not only taking care of the patient day to day, but they're also helping connect the dots. They're really the connective tissues between whoever is going in and out of the room to provide them some episode of care. According to the World Health Organization, although 27 million nurses and midwives make up nearly half of the global health workforce, those same professions also represent 50% of the shortage in healthcare workers today. Some of the dynamics that go into the nursing shortage from an overall pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, you gotta have enough schools, you gotta have enough faculty, you gotta have enough people interested in the field, right? So something the COVID-19 pandemic did for nurses and other healthcare providers is it caused a high degree of burnout too. Now, operational performance has, has long been an opportunity, even pre-pandemic. So it's something that we were behind as an industry on trying to catch up. The pandemic, again, it shed light on some of our vulnerabilities, like how do, how do we do more with less essentially, right? The, the easy way to say it. At present, supply and labor challenges 
coupled with ever-evolving changes in digital intelligence and technical innovation, are pressing leaders to modify underlying processes. With labor supply, one of the things that they'll look at is the value of investing in either automation or certain types of technologies. Automation, we've found, can significantly change the environment for a manager. Technology is often related to automation, but it has its own nuances. And over the last couple decades, we've seen some significant changes, and in particular, in the availability of information for management. Improving performance and then sustaining that level is difficult for any organization. And it's not for a shortage of ideas. Most of the organizations we work with have a tremendous amount of ideas on how to improve. The difficulty is in distilling those ideas into things that are usable and then communicating them throughout the organization. The problem for managers in organizations to try to do this is often a question of resources and time. Now, developments in operational performance are helping organizations achieve and sustain higher levels of improvement. Developments in organizational performance, I break into two things. One, it's how we improve and what we improve. In terms of the how we improve, I think a lot of it is around technology whether it's automation, robotics, or even virtual meetings. On the what we improve, I think it's all around the operating model. The global pandemic has changed businesses and it's changed the consumers. If you look at our employees, there's not enough employees, there's a transient workforce, and there's a lot more work from home or remote workers. When we talk about the supply chain, it was once very predictable. We knew what to order, we knew when it was gonna arrive, and that predictability has gone away. There is one constant though, and it's people change management and adoption is still required. In the healthcare setting, often these improvement initiatives are around better asset utilization. As we get better usage, we get shorter wait times, and as a result, better access to care. When we have labor shortages or medical supply issues, we don't see as many patients, and the assets, the beds and the ORs sit empty. For large healthcare networks, staying up to date with the latest technology can be difficult often requiring capital and change in order to improve performance. The reason we made an investment in creating an outpatient facility in this marketplace is for years we had actually promised the community to build a hospital here. But when we actually looked at the data and all the different advancements and things that have happened with technology, we felt we could deliver a high proportion of the care um, direct to the community without ever building a hospital bed in this market, which would also lower the overall cost of care and allow us to provide um, a triage and stabilization service. The overall operating model isn't just the facility, it's actually creating an environment in which the people work to deliver the care that's important. And so if you looked at all the design features in this facility, you can see it's warm, it's inviting, it creates space. And so we've avoided over a thousand transfers a year where they would have previously had to have gone to a hospital and now they can reside in their community where they're close to their loved ones, close to their family, and an area of comfort. By evolving with infrastructure, organizations can work across functions to enhance processes and systems while modifying the skills and behaviors of both employees and managers. As we all know, healthcare continues to change and there's a movement of care from the traditional hospital-based care to a lot more services being delivered in the outpatient setting. That's happened because of technology advances, safety and anesthesia, skill sets that are able to allow us to deliver care differently. Nobody really wants to be in a hospital. People would prefer to be closer to home. They prefer to have services in the outpatient setting. And so if we don't keep pace with where people want their care delivered, we become less relevant to the marketplace. The way I've always thought about a system of care is you have to have a complex set of assets, things like home health, a long-term acute care hospital, things like a nursing home, home care, just anything that the patient really needs to have the service rendered to them. And again, those changes are being driven by advances in technology, and so we have to continue to evolve the model. There's also a lot more people who would like to have a digital experience in healthcare, like telehealth and the ability to connect either synchronously with their doctor or their you know provider, or asynchronously through a patient portal and communicating through things like Emails. So when we use the word access in healthcare, we have to think much more broadly to be relevant in the industry. Coming up next, watch as we explore some of the latest innovations helping to redefine the manufacturing sector. Lithium ion batteries are the heartbeat of a global drive to create clean energy. 
playing a vital role on electric vehicles, e-bikes, cell phones, and nearly every modern electrical device. The lithium-ion market is forecast to increase to $135 billion by 2031. The drive to clean energy, partly driven by transportation, but then that also ripples through the military needs batteries, the healthcare industry needs batteries, home appliances, you know, lawnmowers need batteries, and then the grid is starting to use batteries to back up wind and solar or power walls in your garage, and you've suddenly got tens of thousands of cells per person. So EVs have been too expensive. Development of battery packs has been too expensive. So automakers can't make vehicles that can compete with gas powered vehicles. That's come down. So now the cost is much more in line with gas powered vehicles. So now they can actually make a focus on building EVs where they historically did not want to. Regardless of their increasing popularity, lithium ion batteries pose a serious safety risk if damaged. Inherent in their chemistries is the chance of what scientists call thermal runaway, which can lead to fire and explosion. It's when you have a mechanical event that damages the battery or a manufacturing defect that you end up causing problems. In a lithium ion battery, you have the anode and the cathode, and they're separated by a very thin piece of plastic. This piece of plastic is called the separator, and it is thinner than the width of a human hair. In the event of a car crash or something that damages the battery, the anode and cathode come in contact with each other because the separator is damaged. All the energy in the battery is sent through that defect or that damaged spot, causing extreme localized heating, much like a fuse would, which can cause the electrolyte or the battery to catch on fire, resulting in the images of batteries on fire or cars on fire that you see on the internet or on the news. I think of thermal runaway uh, and the issues surrounding it in really three buckets. One is the safety. Two, the performance issue. The current risk mitigation strategies all have a negative impact on the performance of the batteries. And then the third bucket is a public policy issue that the current risk associated with thermal runaway, both real and perceived, it limits the adoption of these clean energy technologies with the public at large. Traditional safety measures focus on reducing the energy stored in the battery or surrounding the battery with high weight, high cost shielding, all of which reduce performance and fail to address the problem at its source, the battery itself. The traditional safety measures of lithium ion batteries are to shield the battery with heavy casing around it. The heavy shielding is costly and they still do not solve the core problem. The batteries are still unprotected and when they crash in the kinetic impact, they still catch on fire. We can't have OEMs selling vehicles that get recalled because of fires. That's gonna kill their brand. So they have to develop technology. We have to develop technology around the battery pack to make it safer. Whether it's inside the pack, outside the pack, we need to bring technology that minimizes that risk, if not eliminates that risk. Developments in science are helping to upend traditional measures with innovative and groundbreaking new methods that address the vulnerability at its source. My wife would do a lot of hands-on science experiments with our children. One of them was making oobleck of a mixture of cornstarch and water. So in cornstarch and water, you have a colloidal dispersion of cornstarch, very small particles of it. When you start to press it to get it to flow, these small particles pack together and form a large particle, which is too big to flow in a liquid configuration. We're using that same principle of small particles in a battery electrolyte that when you hit them or apply pressure to them, they pack together and they're too large in order to flow effectively in the liquid, becoming effectively a solid. By addressing the instability in lithium ion batteries at its source, this new technology increases safety and at the same time, improves performance for lithium ion powered devices, such as electric vehicles. Sapphire is an electrolyte additive that goes with lithium ion batteries and upon any kinetic impact such as a car crash or an e-bike crash, the battery will go from liquid to solid and thereby preventing any fire or exploding. We are actually protecting the battery from within the lithium ion battery cell. With the other traditional battery protection, it's trying to shield the battery with additional casing, which is again heavy and decreases performance, adds weight which means there's less acceleration, there's less range on electric vehicles. As the demand for clean energy and lithium ion batteries increases, this advancement in both safety and performance 
promises to power a brighter future. This advancement is an example of an innovation that promises not only to create new jobs, but also broaden the adoption of clean energy technologies and improve safety and performance at the same time. The technology is used to make batteries lighter, to make them cheaper, but to make them safer also. And technologists are pushing higher voltages, higher energy density, meaning more range for a car or more lifetime for your cell phone, while making them lighter and lighter and cheaper and cheaper so that they can power electric aviation and drones and medical equipment and everything else in your life. And it'll change the world. It's almost like when airbags first came out, everyone started to say, why aren't these in every single car? And now that electric vehicles are out, I think everybody will be saying, why aren't these inside my electric vehicle? Thanks for joining us today. We hope you'll tune in next time as we continue to explore some of the significant developments impacting the world around us.